Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Bible study kicked off for this evening. We're going to open up in prayer as everybody close our eyes and bow their head. Father God, as always, we thank you for this day that you have made. We are rejoicing and we are glad yes. in you. As a thank you for always just being you all by yourself. Thank you for the strength that you continue to provide, Father God. Thank you for the love that you always give. Thank you for the comforting words that you always give. Thank you for just using us as willing vessels to go out and spread your word, Father God. As that you increase, I decrease. You give me with the same at the very hour, Father God, to where everybody will get an understanding of your word. Because in your word says, in all you're getting, get an understanding. Father God, to where they can apply it to their lives, live it, and share it with others. So others can come and taste and see how good you are. We're just thanking you for the travel and grace to make it on out here tonight, Father God. Bless those that want to be here, Father. We just love you and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 All that can go the wrong way. Amen. 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 As you, for those that that don't know, for this month, we are talking about not your understanding. For this month, we are talking about not your understanding. And the target scripture that I came from that I started with last week was Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. I'm going to go ahead and reread them. So Proverbs 3, 5, 6 reads, is this King James Version? Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not into thy own understanding. In all thy ways, acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy path. Now we were, we, we, we got in pretty good into talking about this and stuff because there's a lot of people that always want to try to put, they always want to try to make the word fit their logic and fit their understanding instead of allowing themselves to be transformed through the renewing of the mind where you fit the word and you apply yourself to the word and apply it to yourself and not try to make it unto your logic. I, was, I tell people all the time, you don't have to sit up here and because you will make yourself go crazy trying to figure out what God is doing on your behalf and trying to figure out what's going on when you can just either trust him or not. That's where the faith part comes in. That's where the faith comes in. you got to have the faith to where you know that you know that it's going to happen. Because, like I said, he's the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. And you already, those that that actually acknowledge him and give him the credit that's due, know what he has done in your life. You know where, because you've been, we've all been in them type of situations where we're like, we didn't see a way out. We didn't see how we was going to make it out of this situation, whether it, it could have been a life or death type of situation where you didn't see how you was going to get out, but you're still here. And the reason that you're still here is because of God. Amen. It's all God. It's nothing that we did. Well, or should I say it? It's, it wasn't by our strength that it happened. But what we did was we trusted and we believed in him. And I love him because even when we don't trust and believe in him, he still does it for us. Amen. He still does it for us. Like in the word, it says, blessings fall on the just as well as the unjust. Amen. Just like what does salt do? Salt preserves. What does it say we are? We're the salt on earth. So what are we doing? We're preserving the earth. We're preserving the earth. We are preserving his word. We are preserving him here. Because earth is supposed to be a reflection of up there. So you don't have to do like a lot of those religious folks. Say, you know, what a time, what a time when we get to heaven. 
You should have what a time, what a time right now. Right now. Right now. Right now. Right now. Your time right is right now. You don't have to wait until you get to heaven to enjoy what God has for you. He said no good thing will he withhold from you. So that means you can have the best now. Amen. Why? Because the best dwells inside of you. Yes. So let the best that's inside you lead and guide you. Because it will lead and guide you into all of his promises. Yes. He will lead and guide you to all his promises. That's right. Amen. Amen. The Holy Spirit is me. He will lead and guide you. I'm going to go to uh, Great Bibles and go to Galatians 5. <coughs> yes. Galatians 5 17 was on the wall. <laughs> New Living Translation is the version I'm going to read. 5 and 17? Yes, sir. Five, Galatians 5 and 17. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yes, if anybody needs to move in the translation Bible, we have some in the back. Galatians 5, 17, New Living Translation. Amen. When you get there, hold up. Amen. 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 Uh, hold up, so what we don't need. The old sinful nature loves to do evil, which is just opposite from what the Holy Spirit wants. And the spirit gives us desires that are opposite from what the sinful nature desires. These two forces are constantly fighting each other, and your choices are never free from this conflict. It says never free from this conflict. So what it's telling you is that, hey, the spirit that dwells inside you is always going to be opposite of what you're living in, and that's your flesh. So it's up to us, as I said, son, you always have a choice. There's always a choice. Which one are you going to feed more? Are you going to feed your spirit man more? Or are you going to feed your flesh more? Because as I said, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So, you, And you're known by the fruit that you bear. So you can say you're one thing, but your talk is going to show what you really are. As, as I tell people all the time, a, a good a good analogy still be told in the middle of the night what what do you holler at <laughs> what do you holler at you can't even say that you're apple tree and you're bearing oranges what comes out of you is what you're going to be known by just like I said it doesn't matter how people treat you that's how you treat them so, and as I said before, we got to get rid of that old default. Because I said I had to stop saying that to where if, if I had a fear, to my fear would be me to go back to my own my old self. I had to get rid of that old self, just like it says right here. You got to get rid of that old self. So, therefore, if I go to a default, the default that I revert back to is the same me. The same me, which is a child of the Most High God that is serving him and that is loving him and, and trusting only in his word and what he says and growing my faith to where I can obtain the promises that he has presented and laid up for me to where I don't try to go off of my logic. I go off of him. I go off of the Father. Says, like, like we talked about last week, it's not about your educational knowledge. I'd rather choose Revelation knowledge or educational knowledge any day. Amen. People Amen. Too, too often try to make the Bible line up with their educational books and educational knowledge when no. You need to bring all that subject under the Word. Bring all that subject under the Word. The Word is the truth. Your education may be a fact. But the Word is the truth. Truth always overtakes the fact. As we said before, fact may be that you have an illness, but the truth is, by his stripes, you were already healed. Amen. Amen. Fact may be that your account says this, but you are rich through his riches and glory. 
and nobody can measure it. The fact may be that you don't have this degree or educational level, but the fact is that I can still place you in that position to operate in. Yeah, if you trust it, if you use your faith, if you walk by faith and not by sight, because if you walk by sight, what will happen is you'll read the qualifications and you'll be like, ah. And you're probably already working in the position and know it, but just because it says that, need degree, you got like, ah. I'm not even going to apply because it says I need this and I, and so you're already counting yourself out. Don't you know who's you are? When the enemy says no, God says yes. Amen. Trust in it. Apply for it. Apply for it. And watch God work. Watch him work because I want to speak for me. What I noticed when I was working was that, and I had that real relationship with the Father, I realized that I spent more time working for Him than I actually did doing my job. <laughs> and what I mean working for Him is encouraging people, uplifting people, giving them nuggets, you know what I'm saying, sow and seed, like He told me I was supposed to do, sow and seed so somebody else can water it, and also being available and open for somebody else to sow a seed into me as well, and not thinking more highly of myself than I ought to, and not think that somebody can sow a seed into me. As you know, religious folks will do that. Ah, oh, well, you ain't been in no church 30 years like me, so it ain't nothing you can tell me. The devil is a I'm I say the same thing that uh, that pastor be saying. Now I've, I've learned stuff from kids from just when we have our hallelujah nights. <laughs> when they come and they ask them questions and when we have our free for all and people ask them questions, you're like, oh, hold on. Okay. That, and it makes you get into your word. Because they'll come to something like, oh, well, I, I didn't know that. Let, let me get into my word and figure this out and find this out. Because that's, that's one of the standards in here. If we don't give you our opinions and our feelings, we answer it by way of the word. Amen. Scripture, that scripture. When it says in the mouth of two or three witnesses, it's not talking about the mouth of hooky, <laughs> shay shay, and, and, and all them and friends and stuff out there. It ain't talking about them with us. It's talking about scripture. Scripture, that scripture. Amen. Amen. And that's what I love about the Father who serves that when you use the scripture in context, you can always find another supporting scripture to go along with what you're talking about. And so that's that's what we do. We, we give you the word, and we back it up with more word. And then one of the things that uh, I've noticed is that when you are, when you decide to go on that path of wanting to do right, and trying to live your life to do right, uh, you start having those friends that always want to come and try to uh, give you advice on problems when you didn't even ask. <laughs> and they're ready to give you the advice and influence you and, you, and you know that it failed for And they know that it failed for them. It didn't work for them, but they always want to give it to you like it's going to work for you. And like I tell people all the time, if I come to, if we talk about something, I say I feel, I think, I believe, walk away. Yep. Something loose, walk away, because we're not to be led by our feelings and our emotions. We're to give you the word, because as I said before, word is truth. That is how you're going to be set free. It's nothing that we did that got us out of the situations. It's all God. It is all God. We it's not our understanding, but it is His. We can't lean to our own understanding. We have to acknowledge Him in all our ways and let Him direct our path. Because the Father that we serve, He never fails. Never fails. It isn't going to start. And I had to shed a lot of, a lot of people when uh, I gave my life to Christ and started living back right. I had to shed a lot of, a lot of people. Yep. <laughs> yep. I had a, and that's when you find out 
Who are the ones that are were really for you? And who are the ones that weren't? Because I lost some that I thought was like my ride and I, we like 10, 15 plus years in. And stuff thought thought we was like this, yeah. They, they gonna be like family. Trying to get right now. Oh, then all of a sudden they, they, they start uh, saying stuff about, oh, you think you better than us. Oh, you're old Jesus. you old holy roller. Oh, now, now you can't come hang with us and do and do the things that we do. You know, I'm like, oh, first off, I see you. I, you see me right in your face, right? So we're talking. So I, I do. I tell people all the time, if, if you ain't got friends that aren't in church, you ain't working hard enough. Amen. If all your friends are saved, <laughs> you need to uh, show yourself friendly to gain a friend. You know, it's funny how you say that you have friends, you know, that people they were, you know, the right or die. Even your own family. Your own family also not people. They try to so you do the black sheep of the family, you know. And um, just recently, someone had told me that. And mm -hmm. I said, who told you that? <laughs> and, and she said, my family. I said, maybe not. You know that. And I gave her that. You're, you're wonderfully and perfectly made. Really really wonderfully wonderfully made. made. Thank you. So, you know, I, I you know, because I've, at one point in time, that's how I felt like I wasn't worthy of anything from God. Nothing. Because that's how they spoke to me. You know, and when they spoke to me that way, I started getting really upset. And instead of being, you know, like passive, I started getting aggressive. I didn't I didn't take what they told me. I, th I took it to heart. But what happened was when I took it to heart, it didn't stop me. It just made me angry and rebellious. And what I started doing was I started talking talk back and telling them, hey, I don't give up. And I started using those <laughs> words. <laughs> uh, choice words. Yes. It was beep, 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 is not true. It's what God tells me what I know. God tells me I'm perfect. Amen. Even though sometimes I don't see it, I, I have to say, you know what, God, you told me I'm perfect, so I'm going to have to believe what you tell me. You know? And the funny thing is that I don't care what anybody says anymore. And everybody tells me this. You don't stress. You never. I look at them and I say, and they spoke to they spoke about Jesus and, and, and they spoke about him and I mean I say to them, no matter what I do, I'm not gonna satisfy everybody. I can only satisfy myself. And that's my attitude it's not good. Oh well, oh well, that's okay. Whatever. That's that's how I am right now. And everybody gets like and when one of the girls started making fun of me and she's like, Oh my god. I look at her like this, and I look at that face, and she said, look at her, look at me. I said, because I know you're going to be tomorrow, that's all I'll say. Yeah, Daisy. But I praise God, thank God. Amen. 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 You know, we really shouldn't be surprised if that happens, so because as you were saying, it's, it's going to be those who have to be, you know, the Bible called it proving. You know, because you got to go through that pruning season. Whatever happens, what happens when things get pruned? You know, I, I got a bush out in my front yard, and it grows wild, and it has you know stickers and stuff on it, and it grows way out across the uh, sidewalk. You know, and I'm like, well, UPS guy or the Amazon guy, Amazon plus my house a lot. <laughs> but uh, and I'm like, okay, people, you know, people are getting hurt by this. So I'm gonna go ahead and prune this back, so we don't have to worry about it. So we're gonna prune it back a few months go by, and it's and it's bigger. You know, it's more out there, and so that's what the thing about it. You know what? We 
lose these so-called people who were supposed to be our friends, but then we gain more. We don't even realize it, that we gain more. We get, we may lose some friends, but we gain family. Amen. What did Jesus say to Matthew? Uh, you know, in Matthew 13, starting at 53, right down to 58, the Bible says that Jesus couldn't do many miracles in his hometown, right, because of the lack of their their faith and unbelief. And I believe that God uses all of us, all of us, because if you were using a part of the scripture, salt of the earth, the other part says we are the light of the world, right? And it's the light of the world, we are used to, to, we are like lighthouses, and people are drawn to us. And when we go to people and we're trying to, you know, give them the truth about things, they will say things like what they say, you know, uh, you know I remember, you know, you, you grew up right next door, or you grew up down the street from us, you know, all of a sudden, now you somebody this and that, and so I, I don't, I don't, I don't want to hear that from you. You know, because the scripture said, just dust the, they say, kick the dust off your feet and move on to the next one. <laughs> move on to the next one. Why? Because the Lord sent you back there and allowed you to talk to him because he's trying to get something through you to them. And they won't receive it because they think about what you're saying, the old default. See, it's like a computer. We don't have the old default. What we have is what I call a new restore point. Come on. All right? A new restore point. And so we go back, when we go back to something, we're going back to uh, basically something that's, that's, that's a new creature. We're going back to what we, you know what I mean, a spirit, a new creature. And they don't like hearing that. You know, I'm like, hey, but, you know, it's because people think, just like you're saying, just because people think, oh, well, he want to be Jesus streets, holy rollers, this and that. You know, if anybody, y'all know, if anybody knows, I'm a pastor who hates religion. Don't come to me with no religion. Don't, don't, if you have some religion, you better be ready to back it up in the Word. Because <laughs> if you're not, I'm going to give you the Word, and I'm going to let you argue with God. Amen? Amen. Amen. Talk about the about those people, and it's we always wanted to be a good friend, and it causes us to miss out on really living. Because you don't really start living until you find out who Jesus is. Come on, Amen. Amen. And so, and you have those, and if you allow them to influence you, what's going to happen is it's going to pull you further or further away from really living, because they'll make you. Like I said, the, the, the enemy, he's an imitator. So all he can do is try to imitate what God has already done. He can't duplicate. Amen. All he can do is try to imitate. As, we, as that old saying goes, everything that good is ain't gold. Amen. And everything that you think is good ain't of God. But everything of God is always for your good. Amen. And that's why you got to start, I see, that's why you got to start paying attention to what God says and start paying attention to the fruit that people bear. I tell you all the time, you can learn a whole lot about people by just sitting back and listening to them and let them talk. They will tell you everything about themselves. If you just sit back and let them just talk, you find out a whole lot about them. You'll, you'll, you'll find out how they are actually living. You'll find out if they have been set free by the word or if they're under religion, if they're under religious bondage, or if they don't even have a relationship with Jesus, don't know nothing about him. All they all they do know is from what they have heard from somebody else. And living through somebody else's relationship instead of having their own relationship. Right. This is really good, Brother Rock. Um, uh, basically, everyone has been talking about... Um, Isaiah 26, uh, NLT, uh, 3 and 4. It says, You will keep in perfect peace all who trust in you. All who thoughts are fixed on you. You trust in the Lord always. For the Lord is the eternal walk. So, that would us, you know, like Miss Aiki was saying, you know, um, no matter what, 
she still have a peace of mind. And that's all of us, you know. We have to stay, of course, prayed up. Because right now, this world is a, it's a mess. And so we have to stay prayed up because there's a lot of people that's lost. And we know that when we um, stress a lot, uh, what stress would do to you, it would like put you six feet up there. Or put you in a uh, medical condition uh, where you just like yourself anymore. So I love the fact that the study that you're giving on um, not your understanding because when it's not understanding, it is so peaceful, especially only in this way. Amen. And as I was you talking about that, because like I said, when we really find out who Jesus is, we start to live, it's because Jesus is the one that came back to give us everlasting life and more abundant life. And so, and with that comes exactly what y'all was talking about, to where you can live a life without stress. Especially, the one thing that a lot of us do when we do stress, is we stress over things that we don't even have any control over, that we can't change even if we wanted to. And we allow that to be the thing that stresses us and consumes us. And we're trying so hard to try to figure out a way to change it and to make a change happen. Instead of just giving it to God. He said, he'll fight your battles. But you got to know how to pick your battles. And God will show you how to pick your battles. My wife loved, used to love telling me that. And I had to adhere to that. Because I used to be that one that would do what you aren't supposed to do. And that's argue the word. And I used to try to force the word, you know, because I had that zeal, you know what I'm saying, of, of just becoming saved. You know, when you first get saved, you got you want to save the world. You want to put that cape on that you was a superhero and stuff. You want to save the world. You, you jump it down, ready to save everybody and stuff because you tasted and seen how good he is and stuff. And, and instead of allowing the process to work in you and allowing the word to build up in you and allowing the love to build up into you to where you show the love and not show the religion and not show the condemnation of trying to pull somebody and trying to force the word onto somebody because when you I want to see for me, when you try to force the word on somebody, it's going to push them further away. When the word was forced onto me, it pushed me further away. But if you just Give, as I said, little seeds, little nuggets of the word. Hey, Jesus loves you. Hey, I love you with the love of Christ. Amen. You know what I'm saying? Uh, lean not to your own understanding, but not to know your ways. Let him direct your path. Seek him. Things like that. Encouraging stuff. Amen. When you do stuff like that. I see you do both of y'all. Yeah, this is good about the lot. Um, I like when you said, uh, look at the process. I can speak for myself. I had to quit looking at the pain, start focusing on God's process. The process is here. See, that's one thing about it. You, you got to let that old man go and be the new man that you God called you to be. And when you let the old man go, you got to brood to let the new man grow. You got room to let the faith grow in you. Let the Holy Spirit use you, teach you. And when you learn to let go and let God, everything, that God don't make mistakes. And, and, and you'd be surprised how much rest you get, how much peace of mind you get. It said in Matthew 11, 28, 30, it said, take up all my yoke, then you easy. I will give you rest. Jeremiah 29, it was 13, or uh, it said, when you search for me, you'll find me. And I'm going to give you a peace of mind. What more could you ask for? A Savior who's there for you. To give you nothing but the best. The best. And like you said earlier, it don't matter if you still love him or not, he still loves you and will still give you the best. And I like where you're going with this. Amen. I see both of y'all. The one thing we have to realize is when we allow God's wisdom and understanding and word to get into us, it allows us to see further than the just what's in front of us. The short term, it shows us that we are limiting ourselves in our thinking. 
We're limiting ourselves in our trusting. We're limiting ourselves in our believing. We're limiting ourselves in our requesting. Uh, to where you get those, like I said before, that uh, they only request just uh, to feed me and my four and no more. To where he's trying to bless you to bless a city, a town, a state, a country, whatever. We got to quit limiting our understanding, quit limiting our request, quit limiting our faith and our love and our understanding. <laughs> Again, this is amazing. Um, not your understanding, but God's understanding. You know, and I love the fact that our deep is um, talking about the healing process. You know, when when that seizure, I'm going to say that seizure, because that's what I experienced, that seizure, and I made it the unknown, because it tried to take control of my body and I wasn't ready. Even in the midst of, of your uh, praise and worship, you know, I used to have cat codes with them. They knew when I tapped them or I stood close to them. They knew I wasn't going to allow that seizure to take control of my body because God healed me. Amen. 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 And when I would go for, I was, you know, we we seek, we search for things when God already figured it out, already worked it out. So we try to bring things up. And even when I would go for follow up, I would be in there just cracking up because they they trying to figure out what's going on and asking these questions and you know, it's just something that happened. But God already healed me and I'll just be cracking up because now they're going to the to the medical book. And God is my medical book. Amen. That was just going on. All I can think of right now is in order to understand anything of God, you must first develop a relationship with Him. You know, and as we develop a relationship, get closer to Him, get intimate with Him, uh, He'll give us understanding. You know, it's just like like you said, you know, He's given us His Spirit. The Holy Ghost that leads us into all truth. That's in us. Okay? Now, what what truth are we talking about? The Word of God. So the Holy Ghost and the word of God goes hand in hand. Amen? And if we just apply this word of God, if we just apply ourselves to the word of God, that's allowing us to get closer and closer, developing a, a, a more personal and intimate relationship with Christ. And now here it is. You don't have to try and show anybody anything because the Jesus in you will show up, especially when you're showing love. That's the only thing you need to show is love. Now the words will come to your remembrance because that's what's in you. As you're developing your relationship, reading the word of God, as the Bible says in John uh, 15, 7, you know, if I abide in you and my word abide, if you abide in me and my word abide in you, you can act what you would and should be given to you. So that type of relationship, you, it's not a, a, a one-way street. Okay? It's a give and take. You give God some of your time. And you take some more of his time. You know, so as we develop this relationship, we don't have to we get better understanding. And we and the understanding we need to get is that we don't have to do anything but show love, the love of Christ. And everything will work out the way it's supposed to. Amen. Amen. This is good. There's anything about when I first started coming to church, I didn't know and for me, at that time, I felt like God just took my whole life from me because I no longer had the friends that I had. And those friends, there I was. I love the club and smoke and drink and just be so irresponsible and just, that was the life. That's all I knew. And so to me, that was fun and that was it. But when I came to Christ, I couldn't have those friends <laughs> got pulled away. And in that pruning process, I felt like I was alone. I felt like I couldn't relate to anybody. And then I was more upset that I had to come to church and make friends with people that church. I was like, well, they're not like me. That's because I, they're not like me. They don't have the same interests as I do. They want to go to a strip, pole dance club, party with me. He was like, that you just got to change your life. Like, I'm like, what do you I want to do? You know what I'm saying? What do you think I want to do? They're not going to want to do that. 
But in that, because he traveled a lot. So when he would leave me, and I'm here with the kids, you know, I, I was lonely. I didn't have those friends anymore. I didn't go nowhere. All I did was come to church. And this is this boy at first lady asked me about my life. And I'm like, you know, my life. <laughs> but then that, that time that Sean was gone, I started developing a relationship with God. And then I started understanding why those friends could not be my friends anymore. Yeah. What I thought was great friends, God replaced them with the best friends. My yeah. sisters in Christ. My ride or dies. We still do the wild things that I want to do and what they want to do. And there's no judgment. No judgment. And in that, I got a better understanding of the process of, hey, I'm trying to do a new thing, get you new friends that not only love you, but also will protect you and will be there for you. And so you got to have that, that understanding about God. He's always doing something that you cannot see. Amen. He's always doing something further out there. Amen. Amen. <laughs> I'm not going to go where I thought when you talk about people. I'm going to let that go for now. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? But the Bible line is, is we're talking, and, and, you know, the, the, the name of the study is what? Not your understanding, but who's understanding? God's understanding. So how do you get close to God? How do you get God's understanding? You know? The only way you can do that is the scripture says that we have to have the mind of Christ. The only way we can get the mind of Christ is being transformed through the renewing of our mind. Amen. Amen? Amen. And when you get transformed through the renewing of your mind, I mean it's just like the old new software coming in, right? You get a new uh, download. And the old software, you have to let it go, right? So the so new operating system will get to work, okay? And the only way that you can get that line of Christ is through the proper teaching. Mm -hmm. That's, that is the, and you say it often, out of the five-fold ministry, pastor, prophet, apostle, evangelist, teacher, no one ever says, well, you know what? My calling is teaching. <laughs> Everybody want to be a prophet. Every time you go somewhere, somebody talking about their prophet. You're like, oh, Lord, here we go. <laughs> all these prophet lines and prophet liars and all, all this stuff. And you know, you're like, ah, oh, here we go, here we go. And the truth of the matter is, in order to get that relationship with Christ, we need the proper teaching. Like Second Timothy two fifteen tells us, study. It doesn't say read. A lot of people just want to read their Bible. You can't read the Bible from the beginning, uh, from Genesis and go all the way to Maps in the back of the Bible, and think you don't get an understanding of it. No. There is no way. Yet there are people. There are many people who try to do that every single day. They go to the stores and buy these books that says, read the Bible in a year. That does not help you if you do not understand the Bible. Amen. One thing God will not do is ever go against his word. Now, you need to know what word is for you. The problem is religion is coming in teaching people to follow the law, and the law is all about wrath. That's it. That's it. But we're not under the law. The law was ever given to us. Amen. We are under grace. Grace is about God's love. Everybody from the pool pit to the parking lot has fallen short, right? Amen. But if we receive Jesus as our Lord and Savior, then everybody from the pool pit to the parking lot has been made righteous. Amen. Amen? Amen. But people don't know that because they're not getting the teaching that they're supposed to get. You know, God said through loving kindness shall I draw thee. He, he's not drawing people through condemnation. You know, people used to tell me, oh, you know, you don't do this, you're going to hell. Uh oh, yeah. Oh, I can't wait to come to God. Yeah. <laughs> you know, who did that? Hey. You know, you're going to hell for doing this. Ooh, oh, ooh, ooh, I'm in, ooh, I, I, I can't wait to get to go to church so I can come to God since I'm going to hell. <laughs> people, religion, repairs. Love draws. Amen. Amen. 
What was that scripture you read, Deacon Duncan? Matthew 10 what? Matthew 10. No, that was... Uh, Jeremiah. Uh, Jeremiah. No, I'm talking about Matthew, uh, the one, the, the one, Matthew 11. 28. 28. Yeah, Matthew 11, 28. Read it in the message. Read it in the message. Because when you read it in the message, I'm going to tell you, this is why people don't know the word. People don't want to go to church because they think, oh, but I don't want to be like, you know, I want to be like the Holy Rollers, this and that. The problem is, the people who stand in the pulpit most of the time. Because they stand up there and they act like they are, you know, they're, they're this type of deity. <laughs> they act like, you know, they walk around like they float. You know what I mean? Like they've never done anything ever in their lives. Like they're above everybody. Like they're better than everybody. And they're all the same. You know, Jesus, one thing I love about Jesus is Jesus, when he came, they didn't recognize him. And the reason they didn't recognize him because they thought he was going to come as this uh, Sir Lancelot, or you know, this big white sky and cut down anybody who sinned. You know what I mean? That's not what he came here for. He came here, he blended in with everybody else. He looked just like everybody else. He did the same thing everybody else did, just he didn't do, he didn't have no sin in his life. Why? Because he could follow the law. Nobody else can do that. Amen. Nobody else can do that. And because he followed the law and because he uh, fulfilled the law, we don't have to do that. Right. The law was never given to us. We were from the beginning given grace. Amen. We were never given the law. But people in churches today are being taught the law. And when you're taught the law, you're being taught religion. I got a, a friend who is a uh, Messianic Jew. And he comes to Jeremy and I, you know, we talk, we talk about a lot of stuff. And the, the only, his only problem is, they don't believe in the finished work of Jesus Christ. You can't follow the Holy Spirit and follow the law. You have to follow one or the other. Read it, please. Amen. Matthew 11, 28 to 30, message for you. Are you tired, worn out, burned out on religion? Come to me. Get away with me, and you'll recover your life. I'll show you how to take a real rest. Walk with me and work with me. Watch how I do it. Learn the unforced rhythms of grace. I won't lay anything heavy or ill-fitting on you. Keep company with me, and you'll learn to live freely and lightly. Amen. Amen. Unforced Amen. rhythm of grace. Right? That's, what, that's what it's about. God... God's not trying to beat this word in us. He's not. Look, if you if you have a relationship, you want to know about God. You want you want to learn about having the mind of Christ. Then you have to get to a good place where they're teaching the word of God. A good Amen. Sunday school, a good Bible study, where they're teaching the word of God. I went to seminary. I had to be deprogrammed from all that mess in order to be able to give you all the word that God has given me to give to you all the Amen. And I thank God that I was deprogrammed from it. Because Amen. that religion was doing nothing but killing us. Now we know about grace. And what is grace doing? Building us up. Amen. And that's what God is all about, building people up. But in order to be built up, you have to know this word because you run into battles every single day. You're going to battle. You're going to run into a religious person. You're always going to run into a religious person. They're going to tell you, well, you know, brother, if you drink, it's a sin. Well, well you know, Jesus made 180 gallons of wine at a party, so... The best wine. So, what, did he give us, did he give us sin? The best wine at that. Huh? Oh, I'm sorry. You know, but that's how religion is. Religion always try to put rules and regulations on you that God never put on us. Amen. 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 Everything that you were saying just brought me to the scripture that I was going to give y'all to write down. I'm going to read it. And that's Romans 10 and 17 in King James. Romans 10 and 17. It says, So then faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. As he was talking about, when you get into the place, you have to answer continual faith. Once you get into a good Bible, believing Bible teaching church, 
that is giving you the truth and not their opinions and not the films and not religion and not tradition or legalistic doctrine. Notice it says hearing, not by what you heard or what someone told you. Because by hearing, it's a continual thing. Just like when your car, when your vehicle runs out of gas, what do you do? You go to the gas station and put some more gas in it so you continue to drive. Well, guess what? When your faith meter is running a little low, when you're feeling a little discouraged and you're not feeling like you're connecting with the Father and you can't hear from Him, guess what? You can come into the hospital, which is the church, where your brothers and sisters in Christ, and you can get a good word that is going to refuel you. Amen. Fill you back up to where you can keep on fighting the good fight and running the good race with encouragement, not with depression, not with defeat. You can't win with depression. You can't win with defeat. You can't win with stress. You can't win with worry. You can't win with lack. God said, be anxious for nothing. Don't want anything. Mm -hmm. Don't lack anything. He said, but through prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto him. Cast your cares on him because he cares for you. But when you cast it on to him and you give it to him, thank you. Leave it there. Don't, don't bring it back. Don't go pick it back up and, and continue to worry about it. If you're going to pray about it, don't worry about it. If you pray about it, don't worry about it. If you're going to give it to him, give it to him. Because the one thing that, that ain't going to happen is you both aren't going to fix it. <laughs> and as I said Sunday, he gave us some great power to where we can tie his hands up and limit him and not let him do anything in our lives. We can stop him from doing things in our life. Why? Because he won't go against your will. Amen. That's power. Amen. The Almighty God, our Father, can't go against your will. He, can't, he will not. He will not go against his word. Yeah. Against his word. He will still love you, guide you, and protect you at all times. Amen. Amen. There's always another chance to get it right. There's always another chance to want to accept him. There's always another chance to want to start a relationship with him. He always makes a way out of no way. He is a way maker. Amen. See, he, he always provides. He always works and he never fails. This word is the same. Him and the word are the same. As it said in John 1 and 1. They, they are the same. So if he works, then this word works. But you have those that want to, they want to try to bring it to their own understanding. Well, you know, that Bible was written by man. Okay, well, what you're trying to give me was written by man, and it's on a YouTube channel that you got it from. Or it's on the Discovery Channel. So that's not a man or a woman that gave that information to you too. But guess what the difference is? This word that was given to me was inspired by God. What you're trying to get to me was not inspired by God. And we can poke all kind of holes in what you're saying with a cheese grater. Because what you're trying to tell me is from a cheese grater. You're trying to hold water on a cheese grater. And it's going to stay. And, and it's not. And it's, and, it's, and it's funny how uh, <laughs> and it's funny how all those people be trying to discredit God and discredit Jesus and always end up proving it right. And always end up proving the word right. But, but you still have those that still want to try to go with their own logic and with their own understanding and wonder why they continue to fail. You know, that, that, that's what we're taught when we're born. I mean, when we're born, you know, we become a baby and, and you know, we depend upon our parents to do everything. And as we start growing up, we learn how to start depending on our own senses, you know, our five senses, you know what I mean? And then we're taught to be given our own five senses, then we're taught to be, you know, you want to be independent. And we, we take it and we run with it. And the truth of the matter is, this is why you have to be born again. 
Because when you're born again, now you learn how not just the five senses, but now you have another sense. In that sense, is the Holy Spirit that is in you. Amen? Because God puts the Spirit where? In us. Greater is He that is in me than He is in the world. And so, and he, he leads and guides us into all truth. He leads and guides us. He don't lead and guide us into trouble. He doesn't lead and guide us into pain. He doesn't lead and guide us into destruction. No, he leads and guides us into a place that's going to either take care of us, you know, some type of way we're going to be encouraged or we're going to be lifted up. That's who God is, amen? And so we just, we just can't allow... We can't allow uh, folks to, to dictate. Uh, we can't allow our five senses and our emotions to dictate, you know, what's going on. You can wake up in the morning time and you can say, oh, man, my knee hurt, right? But as you say, according to Scripture, by His strength, we're healed. And as you're walking through the day, are you saying, okay, well, if I strike, I'm here. If I strike, I'm here. Or are you saying, oh, my God, my knee hurts. Oh, my knee hurts. Oh, my knee You keep calling it. And so you wonder why this is happening this way. Because you keep calling it. You keep calling it in. You have to learn how to change your talk. Amen. That's another thing in here about having the mind of Christ. Learning how to talk. You have to change your talk. Amen. And then, you know, I just said, you know, I tell people, you know, don't don't say, um, don't say uh, uh, things like, uh, you know, well, my diabetes is doing this, my cancer is doing. Every time you say that, you just claim it. You claim it like it belongs to you, like it's a good package, and it's not. Yeah, it's V. It's V diabetes. It's the cancer, not mine, no. the, because that way you're not agreeing with the doctor because the Bible says in the mouth two, <laughs> two or three, the Bible says, when two shall touch and agree on anything on earth, there it shall be done. Now you're not agreeing with it saying it's yours, but you're saying, hey, you know what? I have a doctor who's going to take care of that. Right? You know what I mean? Get rid of the, the Lord is going to use him to help me get rid of this. But if this is not my cancer, or that's not my cancer, doctor. That's the cancer. That is the cancer, doctor. Amen. We have to learn how to talk. Because we bring so much in on ourselves. We, we bring death on ourselves every day because of the way we speak. Amen. Amen. And the Bible tells us, the, the, the Bible says, the Guard your heart with all diligence, because out of it, because out of it flows the issues of life. So you have, you can't, you can't say all those things you used to say. You have to change your talk. Amen. You have to learn the mind of Christ. You have to. That's why we have to know the Word. Amen. Amen? Now I'm not saying that you know it, that just because you got a little bit of Word, you don't know nothing. What I'm saying is, hey, you need to get into a place that's going to teach you about your benefits in Christ. Amen. Amen. <laughs> so you can definitely get some more word. People don't know that there's benefits in Christ. I was one of those, man, I ain't trying to be no Christian. Get that crap. <laughs> I'm too young, man. I got a lot of things. I got enough to do. <laughs> man, I got, you know, you need. Yeah, I thought you was like, you know, oh, I give my life to Christ, and it's like you in hospice. <laughs> you know? <laughs> that's how, you know, it's, but, but that's not how it was. In fact, I didn't realize how much I was missing when I found out about his grace. Yeah. I didn't realize that, you know what, I can have, every day can be a party for me. Yeah. Amen. I don't. I don't worry about what I can't do because grace don't tell me. Uh, okay, thou shalt not. Thou shalt not. Thou shalt not. What grace tells me is I will. Grace tells me that I can. Grace tells me that I am more. 
Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Yes. And, and so we have to learn the unforced rhythm of grace. Amen. Amen. That was really good, you know, uh, and Pastor was just where I was going. You know, when we're talking about things that happen every day, you know, we have to learn, again, the mind of Christ, we have to learn how to see this through the eyes of God. You know, yes, things are going to happen. Things are going to happen. You can't stop things from happening. But what you can stop is the way you see it. You know, when 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 I go in to give a, a bid for a job, okay, and people say, well, uh, that's too much. Well, now I gotta be designing. You see, I gotta be designing now because let me tell you, Pastor, you can tell you a whole lot of y'all, you can tell folks that don't know that I had a heart to try and please everybody. But compromising, I've learned, compromising helps nobody. You either, you either say yes or no to an answer, and that's it. You're gonna accept it or you're not gonna accept it. But when you compromise, because you feel like you wanna help everybody, but you, you didn't see that the devil was working through somebody to demolish you or to ambush you. So now we have to understand, we have to learn that God will never, ever set you up for an ambush. But he always will reveal it to you. If you're thinking and if you're looking through the eyes of him, the mind of Christ. Amen. You know, so even when it comes to just little things in life, I've learned to see them in a different way than my own understanding. You know, I understand that everything that God does is for my good. So even when something happens that I didn't think should happen, I have to look at it and okay, Lord, you just protected me from something else. And that was it. And later on, it'll come. And even if it don't come, it's okay because I'm going with what God did. I'm going with what he allowed. Amen? Amen. That's exactly what I was saying when you said about the ambush. Because for God, He always gives you a way out. Amen. He always gives warning before destruction. He always gives way out. Just like I always get that analogy of what you, what do you always say when you get caught doing something? Something told me not. To. I knew not something. Greater is He that is in me than He that is in this world. Amen. That Holy Spirit that is in you was giving you and showing you the way out, whether it was a year early, a week early, two hours early, ten minutes early. Amen. There's always a way out. There's always water before destruction. He gives us discernment along with the wisdom and understanding. Amen. And I, when Pastor was talking, he was going exactly where I was talking about it, because before our minds were renewed, we didn't feel that how we were thinking was wrong. We, we didn't know that how, you know what I'm saying, that what we were taught and what was instilled in us was leading us wrong. We felt like we had it all figured out. You know what I'm saying? We were taught, hey, get as much education as you can. It's going to make a way for you. Get all this education, get this and this and this, to where it gets to the point to where we're so educationally good that we're no heavenly good because then, as I said, we started giving those speeches to where, you know, uh, I pulled myself up by my own bootstraps. You know, I, I did this for myself, and I did this, and I made this happen, and and and, and it's, it's a whole bunch of I, 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 instead of you know what, God did this for me through God's strength, through God's help. I was able to excel through God's strength, and, and through using my faith, I was able to get promoted. Doesn't you know what works says all promotion is of God. It comes from God. It doesn't come from what man did for you. No, all the blessings is through God. Everything that you get is through God. But you have to be in a place where you're taught that to where you can have that understanding and know that it is of Him and not through man. Amen. You have to be in the place. Like I said, you can't forget about that part. That's part of five fold. That's teacher. Amen. But I see that. Yep. That's it. Everybody gets the teacher part. Like he said, everybody wants to chase that title of a prophet, apostle, pastor, evangelist, and things like that. But nobody wants to do the studying. 2 Timothy 2 15, to show myself prove where uh, workmen need not be ashamed, rightly divided, and work true. Because when you 
get it, put it in that time and truly study, then you can rightly apply the word of truth where you're not giving your feelings or opinions, a legalistic doctrine. And so, with that being said, we want to end it for tonight. For tonight's Bible study, and we're going to be here same time next week. For those online, thank you for tuning in. Oh, and also, don't forget, now, you only have to wait until Sunday or, or Wednesday. This Friday. Yeah. Hey, man, this Friday is our annual church anniversary and pastoral appreciation. Eighteen years. Oh, eight, oh, eighteen. Sorry, eighteen. And, and uh, it'll be this Friday at seven o'clock here at Christian Freedom Ministries. This is the place to be. Yeah, yeah, this is the place yeah, to be yeah, is where it's going down. And yeah, the thing yeah. for it is stay in his grace. Amen. Yeah. 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 Because, like I said, it's nothing like a, a corporate anointing. Amen. So, when the sun is set free, it's free indeed. Remain free. Amen. Amen.